Hi everybody, it's Gail from Gail's Bookish Things. I'm back with week number, I guess it's actually going to be 15, week 15 of Ink of the Week. Um, to review for this past week, I had, um, this was so funny, last time I did this I, I couldn't talk, I was I guess too tired or something. I used <clears throat> these two pens to do the Yamabuto and the Green Marine ink. And my focus was trying to see if a wetter, more flowy ink would give me better results in using my Cavecos. These are both broad nibs, as I've mentioned before. I like them both a lot. I think they're both really beautiful and, and different. I love the weight of the brass one. <clears throat> this one is very pretty. It's also kind of slick, so I think if I had to pick, I would pick this one if I could only have one of them, but I love the appearance of both of them. The problem is they tend to run dry. I was just watching Kathy at Gadget Stop 321. She remarked again on that how many people are saying that that seems to be the case. So just uh, to summarize... Um, I feel like I talked a little bit about this last week before I even started. So I added today, today though, to my notes that the Green Marine Noodler's Ink, I think I really would buy again. I have looked for different green inks, and there's a lot of qualities about various ones I enjoy, but this is just a great standard green. And where I felt like it was too much of a like crayon box green before, I think that this week I just liked it on all kinds of papers and felt like it was just a nice green, just kind of a, when I say neutral, I don't mean color-wise so much, it's just a like a classic green. And interestingly, I was writing with the brass one with the green marine in it, it was doing great, it's doing great, and all of a sudden it just kind of got really dry. And I thought, okay, I used up the ink because the converters in these are quite small. And I went to go wash it out, and I realized there was still a bunch of ink in there. And so then I just kind of put it back together, and this is how it started writing. Now, I don't know if you can tell, this is much darker. It's a richer, more saturated green, and this is almost kind of like a pastel. And I'm like, what? why you know the same question I've been asking so I know there's a bunch of theories and a bunch of reason but it just seems really funny to me that this green ink that is so often very consistent very flowy works good and all my pens even that ink started to run more faint and more dry in the Caveco so um, the Yamabuto was a very good experience. Let's see, I had that in, I'm getting the two, yeah, I had that in the Golden Espresso, and that is still writing really well. More, It doesn't dry up. You can see when I first wrote with it, it looked quite saturated, and even a little bit, um, kind of started to get a little bit lighter. Um, again, here I commented last week, I was hoping that these wet inks would help me enjoy the pens a little bit more consistently. And then I added the other day that this has been consistently good all week. However, when I look back at when I first wrote with it, and then what it kind of morphed into was a lighter shade. This is a really deep, um, kind of makes me, sometimes these colors make me think of like grape juice. <laughs> like if you could dip your pen in grape juice and it would hold that purpleness that kind of fades a little bit to a, a deep pink. That's kind of what it did, but I didn't have any flow issues. So the color didn't seem to always be as saturated as it came out of the pen, but the flow issue wasn't there. It, it felt wet <clears throat> every time I was writing with it. Okay, so, and then I think that's, excuse me, hang on. <clears throat> I think that was about it on those. I just commented about, yes, I would buy the Green Marine again because it's very reliable and consistent. I've said that already, but I will point out that there, if you can see it, 
I'm sorry if this is fuzzy, blurry. There's a little bit of shading with that green. In the Yamabuto, yes, I would definitely buy again. It, it has also been, for me, a very consistent ink. It's a beautiful, rich, pinkish, purpley, like grape juice color in a way. Not, not really a purple as much as, um, well, like grape juice, you know, it looks really purple, but then if it spills or you have it wiped up or something, it's not as deep of a purple. That's kind of what this reminds me of, if that makes sense to anybody. Um, but I would, I would buy both of those again. What I would not do is put the green marine in this pen. I'm still searching for a consistent ink for this, and I don't know if I've tried my Noodler's Heart of Darkness. Maybe that would be good, but I have that in uh, my fine tip, fine nib pen, so I'm not sure that I want two pens with that in it. This week, for week 15, starting June 27th through next Sunday, I'm going to be going on a, a little patriotic theme here. I've chosen this sample, the Monteverde, um, I've heard it's called Capri, not Capri, but Capri Blue. Um, I'm going to use that one because I feel like this was a really nice, kind of a true blue but for me. It makes me think of the colors we see around our national holidays. And then I had the Audacious Red and I swatched that, but I decided, and I have a sample, that in a sample, I decided to go back to my Rouge Hematite, the J. Herban ink, which is a really pretty ink. You can see the shimmer collects on the bottom. This time I was careful to shake it and I dipped the nib of the pen just a little deeper in there, the Piston Fill Twisby, um, as I filled it. And I think I got a good shimmer amount there. Can you see that? So pretty. So I'm just gonna, and it's coming down in here. I'm excited to try this and I think it looks so neat in this uh, clear demonstrator. Well, a demonstrator, I guess, would be clear, but in the clear barrel there of this demonstrator pen. And then this one, you know, when the light hits it, you can see that there's a blue ink in there, but it looks pretty dark um, otherwise. If I hold it out to the sun, I can see the color coming through. But that was really fun to me. I feel like this ink and this um, Twisby cap and that thing, whatever that's called, um, I can't think looks similar. So I'm going patriotic this week. If I had a white lidded Twisby, I would probably have thought of how to throw that in the mix or maybe use that instead of the red. I mean, not the red, the clear. Um, but anyway, I think that'll be fun. So I'll just use that with some of my basic um, journaling. And uh, you can kind of see how they look here. Um, it turned out really nicely. I see a lot of shimmer because I was careful to get the shimmer in the barrel. Sometimes I don't do that, and then I'm like, why do I have this ink? There's no shimmer in it at all, and that was why I originally bought it, plus the shading or sheen you can see if you do a big blotch swatch of it. Just my first impressions with just writing this now, just a little bit ago, was, um, again, what I told you, getting the shimmer in there, and then they both felt, felt fairly wet and flowy when I was just writing out this little thing of what inks I was using and in which pens. So very favorable. I've messed around with this one before and liked it um, a while back. I, I was doing like the drawing for the ink of the week, but I decided to go back to that and just um, kind of compare these two inks, but also just, um, they're two very different kind of inks. So to compare them might be, contrast and compare, I guess is what I'm saying, might be good, but I realize that they're going to be different. But the pens are the same type of pen, so it will further enhance my evaluation process of the inks that I have on hand, whether they be sample or bottles that I own. So we'll, we'll determine this later, and as I write more lengthy um, entries in my journal and so forth. I'll add more to the comments and update you next week. So um, I think that's all for now. I hope you have a 
great rest of the weekend and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.